everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Rethink Connectivity. My name is Jeremy, and today we're going to have a little bit of fun. Um, it's going to look a little bit different because I'm going to be live coding today, and you're going to see my face. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to work on an interactive whiteboard. I have this whiteboard um, put together. You can actually, you know, let me pull it up. You can actually draw and everything like that, multiple colors, multiple sizes, which is great. But there's a couple of problems with it. One, it's not multiplayer. So, you know, I'm drawing over here and I can't see the changes. Um, also, it's not persistent. So I refresh the page and I can't see um, what I just drew. So we're going to integrate this particular project with Nats so that we can get both, uh, you know, multiplayer via Nats messaging and then persistence via Nats jet stream. So we're gonna be mixing all these concepts together. And we're gonna be using the Nats WebSockets library to uh, tie it all together on the front end. So this is a really cool project because it means I'm just writing front end code and I'm using Nats for all the back end stuff. Um, so it's going to be pretty fun. Let's jump straight in. Okay, so I have uh, this project up that I'm running uh, via Vite. Um, it's a simple Alpine JS project. Um, you don't really need to know all the details of how to use Alpine or anything like this. This is all just very simple JavaScript. So uh, we'll work from there. But the first thing we need to do is we need to fire up our, a NAT server that we could interact with. Now, so far we've been configuring NAT servers just through command line flags, like turning on Jetstream and stuff like that. This time we're going to be using a server configuration, uh, a server configuration file to be more specific, to fire up our server. And so I'm going to create a server.conf file inside of Vim. And inside this server.conf, we're going to uh, use a WebSocket directive because WebSocket isn't turned on by default um, in inside of NATs. Um, you have to turn it on yourself. You have to say what port you want it to listen on and everything like that. In our case, we're going to use localhost 9222. There we go. And we also want to turn on no TLS. Um, because uh, you know we're not operating in a production environment, we don't need to worry about certs or anything like that. Um, but when you do go to production, you'll want to turn TLS on for sure. Um, and I'll put turn compression on just for better performance. And we're going to say Jetstream over here so we can turn on Jetstream. And that's pretty much all we need for our configuration. Obviously, there are so many th more things to configure here, but I'll cover that in another episode. So we have our server configuration. Let's fire up our server. We'll just say nats server. We'll pass in C for config, and we'll pass in the server.conf. And as you can see, our server is fired up both with Jetstream, and it looks like it's connected to this WebSocket via uh, pro uh, WebSocket localhost 9222. We even get a warning, uh, you know, not to use uh, non-TLS in production, which is great. All right, so now we can go over to our code and I'll explain a little bit about how uh, this whiteboard works currently and then how we're going to pull in Nats and Jetstream to make it persistent and multiplayer. So we'll go to our HTML file first. Again, we're using a library called Alpine.js. It's just there to create some neat little bindings inside of the UI for all these buttons and everything like that and to kind of help us um, <clears throat> bind to the different events on the HTML5 canvas. You don't really need to think too much about that. We also have this kind of idea of, of rooms. So if I go to the root of this project, it'll say, hey, this is a Nats whiteboard. Start a whiteboard and it'll generate a random ID for a room. So we're kind of multi-tenant, right? And both these guys go into this room. Okay. Cool, so um, we're hardly going to be touching this uh, HTML. Just know that it's driving most of the UI and it's you know calling into the various events on this HTML5 canvas. What we're really going to be touching is our main.js file, which is creating this whiteboard component, all right? And so this whiteboard component um, basically handles all of the drawing. I'll run through it really quick. Um, we size our canvas, we start drawing, um, you know, setting up some state. And then when we actually draw, we create a message and call into this draw raw command, um, which just basically calls into some HTML5 canvas uh, uh, API. So very simple, pretty straightforward. We're going to be gutting this a little bit and adding Nats in, but you can see this is like, you know, pretty short, 66 lines of code. It might be about, you know, 80 to 100 by the time we're done. So let's uh, start by setting up uh, a connection to our NATS server so we can start calling into NATS. To do that, we're going to create an init function. Alpine gives you uh, the ability to create um, an init function. And basically, whenever this component's mounted, it will call init. 
Um, and now we will pull in some of our Nats libraries to connect. So there's a couple variables that we need here uh, straight on the component. The first one is going to be our Nats connection, which we'll just call Nats. The second one is going to be our JSON codec. Um, and remember that Nats is payload agnostic, so we have to use some sort of codec to encode and decode the message, and we're going to be using a JSON codec. So let's actually assign that JSON codec, this.jc equals uh, JSON codec. We'll pull it in from the Nats WebSocket library. Uh, you can see we auto imported it. All right, so that's done. We can use that whenever we want. And we're going to say, uh, we're next going to uh, actually put together our Nats connection. So this.nats equals a wait, and we're going to call a connect function. So we'll import it from nats.ws. There's our connect function. The connect function is going to take uh, servers which is going to be that WebSocket address that we pulled in from the server uh, when we fired up our server. So WS localhost 9222, there we go. And that's pretty much all that we need to create our NATS connection. Let's actually test this out by um, every time we draw, we should be publishing a particular message. So let's go down here to uh, draw and we have this const message. So right after this draw raw command, um, let's say this.nats.publish and we'll publish to a subject. Now we actually need a subject to publish to. Um, I'm just gonna call this subject right here and I'm going to pass into our component a, a subject. Now this needs to come from the HTML and since we're using multiple rooms, um, we'll have to make sure that we call into the right subject. So I'm gonna go into my HTML and I'm gonna see where this whiteboard is instantiated. And you can see that we're saying if we have a room selected, then we can create this whiteboard. So I can create a subject like whiteboard dot, you know, room ID. Um, and room ID is actually just room here. So I'm going to say whiteboard dot room. This is just all plain JavaScript anyway. So that's going to be our subject that we use. Um, I promised we'd hardly touch the HTML. This is the only place we'll touch it. Uh, and we'll go to main.js. So we're passing in our subject here for the whiteboard that we want to publish to. And let's go back to where we are publishing. So this.nats.publish to our subject. And then we need to pa pass our data. And this is going to take a, uh, a byte array instead of just a you know random JSON object. So we need to actually encode it. So we'll say uh, this.jc, uh, which is our... Uh, which is our JSON uh, codec, and we'll say encode. And we'll encode this uh, message over here. And that's pretty much all we need to do to start publishing to Nats. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let's actually test this out. So in my server tab, what we'll do is we'll say Nats sub um, whiteboard.star. And let's go in here and start uh, doing some drawing. Okay, and you can see that we get messages. Great, so we have a message of you know where it's coming from, uh, what the line is going to, its thickness and its color, um, which is great. We're gonna add a couple more attributes to this because this isn't going to be enough for what we need when we wanna go multiplayer. So first up, um, let's add to this. Uh, now we're probably going to have more than just a draw command. We're gonna have a draw and a clear. So we wanna give this thing a type uh, of draw and we'll be utilizing that later. Secondly, um, we wanna draw on the canvas locally um, for our drawing, so it's like nice and quick and responsive. Um, but if there's any like network jitter, um, we wanna make sure that we kind of dedupe that. And we, we will just continue to draw raw locally um, and only draw the other player's things uh, via a Nats subscription, right? So what we're gonna do is we wanna give this thing an ID of like the player. Um, and we could do this by, uh, We'll just sit, call this this.id, and we'll have to assign an ID up here. And what we'll do for this ID is um, we'll just do some like math.random, but we'll make it a little bit prettier. Um, uh, 36 and give it a, I don't know, it should be like eight characters or something like that. I think that should work. Okay, so we should now be seeing a random ID when we go to draw, go over here. So we have a random ID and now we have a type. Okay, so I think this is what we need to be able to um, start sending messages around and using them. So we're, we're sending messages via NATS, now we have to consume them and dedupe them based on the ID so we can know it's coming from another player. So what we'll do here is uh, we'll start um, looking at, uh, we'll start creating a subscription 
on that particular NAT subject and we'll start drawing if it's coming from another player. So we'll say for, uh, uh, actually we want to create a uh, subscription first. So we'll say const uh, sub equals um, this dot nat dot subscribe. And we want to subscribe on our subject. And that's how we create a subscription. And then we want to use a async iterator for this subscription. So we can say for um, await const message uh, of subs, or so pulling in each of the messages for the subscription. And uh, we need to now decode this data because remember it's coming in as JSON. We need to turn it into a, an actual JavaScript object. So we'll say, uh, let's see, const data equals this.jc.decode um, the message dot data. Okay. Um, let's see what errors we might have got here. Uh, we don't need that comma. Okay, so we have our data, and we need to check if data if the data's uh, ID is not equal to this ID, then we can uh, call draw raw with the data. Okay, so this should make us multiplayer. All right. Um, so what we're doing is we're going through each of the messages, and again, if the ID uh, doesn't match, meaning it's coming from another player, then we'll call this draw raw function. Let's try it out. All right, cool. So we do have multiplayer working. That's great. Um, next up, now that we have multiplayer working, let's actually layer on Jetstream persistence because we still don't have persistence here. Um, for that, we'll have to create an, a Jetstream stream, and uh, we'll have to actually use the Jetstream context for our subscription. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, um, let's go over here. I'll, I'm just going to create another terminal session and we'll create a jet stream stream. So we'll say nat stream create or nat stream add uh, whiteboard. And we're gonna pass in a couple flags here. We're going to say um, no deny purge and allow rollup. Now I could configure these in, in other options as well, but this is basically going to give us a roll up functionality, which we'll use for, for the clear button later on. Um, and we'll say the subject is whiteboard dot star. And we'll keep all the other stuff the same. Okay, so we have our stream called whiteboard um, and we create it through the CLI. Now let's start uh, consuming this stream uh, via our WebSocket connection. Okay, so there's actually not a lot that needs to change in order for us to use this. Um, we're going to use what's called an ordered consumer, which sets up uh, this ephemeral consumer that we're that we're going to be creating um, in a very specific way so that it makes sure that we, you know, always guarantee orders, uh, order of messaging. And as soon as we find that there's gaps, we kind of restart and create a new consumer, um, which is great for this particular use case for drawing. So, um, so what we're going to do is we actually need to create um, the options for the consumer and we'll pass them in to the Jetstream context uh, subscribe command. So uh, we'll say const opts is uh, consumer ops and we'll import that from the nats.ws library. And we'll say opts and we'll call this an ordered consumer. That's really the only option that we need to configure here. And then um, what we need to change in is instead of saying nat subscribe, we need to say nats.jetstream.subscribe. And this is coming back uh, asynchronously, so we'll need to add an await here. Um, and then we need to pass in options right there. And we should be good. This should give us uh, some level of persistence. Hopefully I did it right. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but we do still have uh, the multiplayer, which is great. If you refresh, yeah, we do get persisted messages because every time this thing refreshes, it creates a new consumer and pulls in all the data via the stream. So this is great. So we have live real-time whiteboards. The only thing that we don't have is when somebody presses the clear button, it doesn't clear it for everybody. This is where we're going to send a clear message and we're also going to add a roll up. So let's do that real quick and then we'll close out this episode. Okay, so if we go to our clear function, you can see that we're just telling the, the context to clear, which is why we'd see it um, on the person who was trying to clear the screen and not the other player. So what we can do here is I can just comment out this code. And what we want to do here is we actually want to publish a message. Um, and the message we want to publish 
is going to look a lot simpler than the draw message, but um, it needs to be a message nonetheless. Um, message is, uh, we'll give it the ID of our player ID, just in case we need to know. Uh, and then we'll give this a type of clear. All right. And then we can respond to this message in the subscription when we want to. Um, okay. And then we're going to do something a little bit differently. We're going to use what's called a Nats rollup, which means when I send this message, clear all of the messages before them. So next time a consumer connects, it's not getting all of those messages because we've essentially cleared the screen. And this is going to keep things a little bit more efficient. Um, so we'll say uh, we're actually going to use the headers um, portion of the Nats WebSocket library. And we're going to set a header on this message called Nats roll up and we're going to roll up this particular subject. You could roll up the subject or you could roll up the entire stream. For us, we're going to roll up the subject. All right, now we're going to say this Nats publish and we want to publish to this subject and we want to uh, encode the message and we also want to pass in some headers. And that's it. We're now publishing a clear command. Um, the last thing we need to do is actually handle when a clear command, where when a clear message comes in. And so what we'll do is we'll go back up here and uh, I'll paste in this command or this code here for clearing the screen. And we'll put in a switch statement where we'll switch on the data.type. And in the case that it's a draw command, we will execute this code. In the case that it is a clear command, we will execute this code. And that's pretty much it. Probably should break there. And then we can console.log um, uh, unknown type. If I knew how to type. <laughs> okay. So we're handling clear and we're handling draw. Um, let's actually start playing with this and see if we actually get clear. Ah, we're publishing to the wrong subject. Okay, great. So I'll go back here. There we go. So we've cleared the screen for everybody. We're still getting real live updates. You can clear the screen. You can up the thickness. So this is just uh, one example of how easy it is to get Nats working with something like JavaScript and WebSockets. It's really not that much code. I mean, we sat here for a few minutes and, and put it together, um, but it gives you a lot of really cool features and functionality, especially around the real-time aspect. So I did this with a little drawing application, but imagine doing this you know, with, with other types of applications, to-do applications, et cetera. You can do a lot of really neat things while combining Nats messaging and Jetstream for some real-time functionality. So I hope you guys liked this episode. Um, it was a really fun one to make. Um, if you guys do like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. Um, co comment down below in the YouTube video. Give us feedback on Twitter. Uh, we'd really love to know what other content we can create like this. Um, and we, I will see you guys next week. Thanks so much.